Hello everybody, welcome to season 4 of Grand Prix Manager 2, the 1987 mod. So, last time we had Alan Post win the Drivers Championship for the third time in a row, and McLaren with the Constructors for the third time in a row. Will season 4 be any different? Well, let's get right into it and we'll start with the transfers. Uh, to begin with, there are no drivers who competed last season who are not competing for this season. So let's just get straight in with the team. Starting off with the last place team, the Roos. Now, the Roos were the only team who didn't score any points last season. Uh, their driver number one is Jean Alessi, as he's replaced uh, the fellow Frenchman of Remy Arnoux. Driver number two is still Yannick Dalmas, and Scott Pruitt remains as their test driver for the Roos. Next up we have Zach Speed, and Zach Speed have the exact same driver lab as last season, Berg driver number 1, Derek Work driver number 2, and Chris Nissen as their test driver. Next up in the 11th place is our guys at Minardi, and in Minardi we have Eric Comis as driver number 1, Giovanna Amati is the driver number 2, and Oscar Rui has been demoted to being a test driver. Giovanna Matti was consistently better than Larui and Comis, which is why she's got a race seat and Larui was demoted. Next up is 10th place Arrows, and Arrows have the exact same driver lineup as last season. A Cheever is the driver number one, Frank is competing driver number two, and Joy Dumfries the driver number three for Arrows. Next up is Ags, and Ags once again has the exact same driver lineup as last season. Roberta Maria driver number one, Pascal Fabry driver number two, and Yari Nuremin as their test driver. Next up is 8th place uh, team which is Terrell. Now Ray Arnoux has been taken up as the driver number one who was up the roof last season. Jonathan Powell, who was the driver number one uh, last season, is now the driver number two. And Chris Danis, who was the winningest as driver number one last season, is now their test driver to replace the vacant test driver role that Sean O'Lacey created. Next up is the seventh place team, Liche. And Keki Rothberg uh, stays at the driver number one at Le, uh, Liche. Philip Streif, who was at Chell last season, is now the driver number two at Liche, replacing Nelson PK. The test driver is still Pale Barella. Next up, we have the sixth place team, Brabham. Brabham still has Nigel Mansell as the driver number one, but the driver number two is Thierry Bootson, who was at Benetton last season, replacing Willie Ribs. Piccolo Ginzani is still their test driver this season. Fifth place last season was Williams. Christian Dana has been replaced by their driver number one this season of Nelson Piquet. Philippe Alio remains as the driver number two, and Jean-Louis Schleser is still their test driver this season. Fourth place last season was Benetton, and Benetton have Andrew Chesteris, who was their driver number two last season as the driver number one. Alessandro Denis, their test driver last season, is now the driver number two. And Willie Ribbs, who was Brabham last season, is now uh, Benetton's new test driver. Next up, third place team last season was Ferrari. Ferrari have kept their driver lineups of Michele Alvaretto, Martin Brundle, and Stefano Mondina. Next up, the runners up from last season, Lotus. And they have the exact same driver lineup as last season. Ayrton Senna is the driver number one, Satoru Nakajima is the driver number two, and Jokan Winkelhog is still the test driver. Last and not least, the Drivers' Champion and the Constructors' Champion last season of McLaren. Alan Pross, who's won all three seasons so far, is still the driver number one. Ricard Petrese is still the driver number two. And Stefan Johansson is still their test driver for the season. Just before we get into the first round of the season, here is the full Drivers' Transfer list for the season. And, as I can, and as, if I'm right in saying this, this is probably the fewest driver changes in this mod to date in this uh, 1987 series. Round one of the season is the Brazilian Grand Prix Yacreb Pagua. I don't know how to pronounce that properly, I'm so sorry guys. But anyway, Giovanna Amati took pole position for Minardi. Derek Wark is second for Zach Speed. Jean Alessi third for LaRousse. Ayrton Senna fourth for Lotus. Michele Alberto fifth for Ferrari. And rounding off the top six is Nelson Piquet in the Williams. The three-time champion of this mod, uh, Alan Pross is down in ninth in the McLaren, and the other Minari driver of Eric Comus is seventh on the grid. 
Off of the start line, the two Minari drivers kept their positions first and seventh. Lap two of this Brazilian Grand Prix, and Alan Prost and Nigel Mansell both retired for the Grand Prix from ninth and tenth respectively. Prost may not be in the top six at that point, but remember Prost won all three seasons of the 987 mod so far. Lap 18 of the first Grand Prix of the season, and Eric Cohen from seventh place retires for the Grand Prix, along with Pascal Fabre, who is joined for AGS this season. Lap 22 of the Grand Prix and Nakajima and Michele Alberto from 3rd and 4th both retired from the Grand Prix at the same time. And after the first pit stop of the race, Amati still leading with 3rd and 2nd, PK 3rd, Warwick 4th for Zach Speed, and the two Benetton drivers of Duchesworth and Nini rounding off the top 6. After Amati made his 2nd and final pit stop of the race, PK was leading the Grand Prix with Amati 2nd, Senna in 3rd, Duchesworth 4th, Derek Warwick 5th for Zach Speed, and Franco Scapini for the Arrows rounding off the top 6. Lap 48 of the Brazilian Grand Prix and Giovanna Amati retired from the Grand Prix from 2nd place along with one of the back marker drivers of the Grand Prix being Al Fanchini in the Benetton. Rene Anu and the Terrell got promoted into the point position thanks to Amati's retirement. However, Arnu soon retired for the Grand Prix and Gerhard Berger in the Zach Speed ended up in the top six. So the only driver to not be in the top six is the is Ricard Patrese, joined for McLaren, who won uh, the first three seasons of this mod. The race came to an end with Nelson Piquet winning the Brazilian Grand Prix for Williams. Here is the third game second for Lotus, and Chesra is third in the Benetton, Derek Work fourth for Sack Speed, Franco Scapini fifth in, in the Arrows, and Gerhard Berger in the other Sack Speed gets the final point in sixth place. Round two was the trip to San Marino for Emila. Satoru Nakajima gained pole possession for the Lotus. The two McLaren drivers are second and third on the grid. Michele Alberto fourth in the Ferrari. Ayrton Senna, the other Lotus drivers, down in fifth. And Martin Brundle in the other Ferrari, rounding off the top six. The two Minari drivers of Amati and Comus are tenth and twelfth on the grid. And the only driver who didn't make the 107 percent time and wouldn't be uh, taking part in the Grand Prix is Philip Streif for Ligier. After the start of the race, the two Minari drivers kept their positions of 10th and 12th. After the Minari drivers made their first pit stop of the race, Nakajima kept the lead of the Grand Prix, Alvareto was in 2nd, Frost in 3rd, Senna 4th for Lotus, Petrati 5th for McLaren, and right at the top 6 is still Martin Brown on the Ferrari, as Giovanna Amati ended up retiring from the Grand Prix. After Comis made his second and final pit stop of the race, Nakajima is leading the Grand Prix, Alberetto in second, the three time champion in his third, Senna fourth, Brundle fifth, and round of the top six, Ricard Patrese for McLaren. The race ended with Nakajima winning the San Marino Grand Prix, breaking second for Ferrari, Alan Prost third for McLaren, Senna getting fourth for Lotus, Martin Brundle fifth for Ferrari, and round of the top six, Ricard Patrese for McLaren. Round 3 of the season is the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. Both Ferrari drivers taking the front row of the grid. Alan Prost in third for McLaren, Eric Comis fourth for Minardi, Ricard Patrese fifth for McLaren, and Giovanna Amati rounding off the top six in the other Minardi. All 26 drivers made the start for this race. During the formation, Franco Scapini, who qualified 16th from the grid, stalled his car, so he had to start from the pit lane. And once the drivers got underway for the race, the two Minari drivers kept the possession of 4th and 6th. Lap 17 of the Grand Prix and Amati and Senna both retired from the Grand Prix from 5th and 6th. That pushed Patrese and the McLaren in the, in, to 5th and Nakajima and the other Lotus into 6th place as Eric Coma soon came to the pits for his first stop at the Grand Prix. And once he had left the pits, for the first time in this race, Alberetta was lean for Ferrari, Prost was in second, Martin Brundle third for the other Ferrari, Ricard Petrati fourth for McLaren, Eric Comis in fifth for Minardi, and Satoru Nakajima rounding off the top six. Once Comis came out for this, his second and left up the race, Alberetta was still leading the race for Ferrari, Prost was in second for McLaren, third was Martin Brundle for Ferrari, Petrati fourth in the other McLaren, 
Next year, my fifth for Lotus, and running off the top six was Eric Comus in the sole remaining minority. Going towards the end of the race, both Ferraris and Patrese came to the pits on the second last lap, which allowed Alan Prost in second place to steal the win for Alberto. Both Ferraris second and third, Patrese fourth in the other McLaren, Satoru Nakajima taking fifth for Lotus, and the final point went to Eric Comus in the Minardi. Round 4 is Monte Carlo for the Monacan Grand Prix. Both Minardis lock out the front row, with Alberto taking third, Senna fourth in the Lotus, Martin Brundle fifth in the other Ferrari, and burning off the top six with Alan Prost for McLaren. During the formation lap, Johnson Palmer, who qualified 13th in his Terrell, stalled his car, so he had to start from the pit lane. And meanwhile, off the start of the race, Giovanni and Matti uh, held onto the lead, while Eric Comas lost second place to Michele Alberto in the Ferrari. After the Minardis made their first pit stops of the Grand Prix, Alberto was leading the race with Senna in second, taking third with Alan Prost and McLaren, Andrew Chetters fourth for Benetton, Nigel Mansell fifth for Brabham, and Rene Arnoux in the tow, rounding off the top six. Once both Minardis made their second and final pit stops of the Grand Prix, Alberto was leading the race with Senna in second, Mansell third in the Brabham, Prost fourth for McLaren, Andrew Chester is fifth in the Benetton, and running off the top six is Martin Brundle in the Ferrari. The race soon came to an end with Michele Alberto winning the Monacan Grand Prix, Senna taking second, Prost third in the McLaren, Brundle fourth in the Ferrari, De Chester is fifth for Benetton, and Nigel Mansell gained the final point in sixth place for, for Brabham. In the Drivers' Championship, Michele Alberto having a four-point lead over Prost, who is a further two points ahead of Senna in third place. And in the Constructors' Championship, we see Ferrari leading with four points over Lotus, who are a further five points ahead of McLaren in third. Round 5 is the German Grand Prix at the Nürburgring, with Derek Warg in the Zach Speed taking pole position, Giovanna Amati second in the Minardi, both Lotuses on the second row of the grid. Philippe Palio is fifth in the Williams, and running off the top six, Ex Comas in the Minardi. The two championship contenders not in the top six, Alberto and Pross, are on the fifth row of the grid. After the start of the race, the two Minardis kept their places uh, of second and six. On the third lap of the race, Giovanna Matti from second place got a 10 second stop go penalty and ended up coming out in fifth place. After both Minaris made their first pit stops of the race, both Lotuses were first and second, Philippe Alliot third for Williams, Derek Warwick fourth for Zach Speed, Martin Brundle taking fifth for Ferrari, and Nelson Piquet in sixth place for Williams. After the Minaris made their second and final pit stops of the race, the two Lotuses were still leading the Grand Prix, with Alio third for Williams, Derek Warwick taking fourth for Sack Speed, and Martin Brundle fifth for Ferrari, and Nelson Piquet rounded off the top six. The race soon came to an end, with Ayrton Senna taking the race win at Nür the Nürburgring with his teammate in second place, Alio getting the final podium spot, with Derek Warwick fourth, Martin Brundle fifth, and the final point going to Nelson Piquet in the other Williams. Round 6 is the French Grand Prix at Paul Ricard, with Giovanni and Matti taking pole possession in the Minardi. Both Ferraris are second and third on the grid, both McLaren's fourth and fifth on the grid, and rounding up the top six, Sears and Senna in, the other, in one of the Lotuses, while the other Minardi of Eric Comis qualified in eighth place on the grid. Off the start of the race, both Minardis kept their positions of first and eighth. After when Minardi made their first pit stops of the race, Alberto was leading the Grand Prix with both McLaren second and third, Nakajima was in fourth for Lotus, Giovanna and Matti was in fifth for Minardi, and running off the top six was Ayrton Senna for Lotus. After the second and final pit stops were done for Minardi, Alberto was leading the Grand Prix with both McLaren second and third, the two Lotus were fourth and fifth, and running up the top six was Eddie Cheever in the Arrows. 
The race came to an end with Michele Alberto taking the race win for Ferrari. The two McLarens take second and third. The two Lotuses take fourth and fifth. And the final point went to Eddie Cheever in the Arrows. Round 7 is the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Both McLarens taking the front row of the grid. The second row is Ferrari. And the third row of the grid is Lotus. While the minority drivers of Comas and Amati are 10th and 11th on the grid, and the three drivers who did make the 107% time who will be taking part for the race are both Liege drivers of Keke Rosberg and Philippe Street and Rennie Arnoux driving for Terrell. Off the start of the Grand Prix, both minorities gained a position as they got past Ayrton Senna and the Lotus who fell to the back of the field before retiring from the Grand Prix. Lap 6 of the Grand Prix and Giovanni Amati retired from the Grand Prix from 10th place shortly followed by Nigel Mansell in the Brabham. Lap 18 of the Grand Prix and Eric Comas from 9th place ended up retiring from the Grand Prix so it was a double DNF for Minardi. Lap 32 of the Grand Prix, Nelson Piquet and Satoru Nakajima from 5th and 6th place both retired from the Grand Prix which pushed Thierry Boutsen in the Brabham and Philip Pallio for Williams into the top 6. The race came to an end with Alain Prost winning the British Grand Prix with Michele Alboreto taking 2nd place. Ricard Petrezzi 3rd for the other McLaren, Martin Brundle the other Ferrari driver in 4th he boots him fifth for Brabham, and the final points went to Philly Palio in the Williams. And just before the next round of the season, we have two drivers who are out injured for the next race. Alessandro Dini for Benetton would be out just for one race. However, Pascal Fabri would be out for not only just the remainder of the season, but if he was to drive for Ags for next season, he would be out for either the first two or first three races of the season. Round 8 of the season is Hockenheim for the German Grand Prix. Both McLarens gain the front row, both Ferraris in the second row, and both Lotuses on the third row of the grid. The two minority drivers of Amati and Comus are in 7th and 10th on the grid. And as you can see, three drivers are missing from the, from the qualifying times. That's because both Brabham drivers didn't set a lap time, and the other AGS driver who was stepping up for Fabry didn't set a time either, so they wouldn't be qualified for the grid. Neither would Rennie Arnoux for Terrell or Philippe Streif for Ligier. And by the way, the test driver for Benetton, who's replaced the knee for this race, Willie Rebs, qualified in 16th place compared to Andrew de Chesneris, who qualified 11th for Benetton. On the formation lap, Eric Kubis, who qualified 10th in the grid, stalled his car, so he had to start from the pit lane. And then, uh, at the start of the race, Jonathan Palmer, who qualified 13th in his Terrell, stalled his car, so he was immediately out of the Grand Prix. On lap 8 of the Grand Prix, Michele Alboreto from 5th place for Ferrari retired from the Grand Prix at the same time with Jean Alessi in the LaRousse, uh, who was at running at the back of the field. That pushed Giovanni Amati in the minority into the top 6. Lap 40 of the Grand Prix, Giovanni Amati from 6th place to tough the Grand Prix. That let Nelson Piquet in the Williams get into the top 6. After Comus made his first pit stop of the race, both McLarens were leading the Grand Prix, with Nakajima 3rd for Lotus, Brundle 4th for Ferrari, Senna 5th for the other Lotus, and right off the top 6, Nelson Piquet for Williams. After Coas made his second and final pit stop of the Grand Prix, both McLarens were leading the race, Brando was in third for Ferrari, both Lotuses fourth and fifth, and rounding up the top six again was Nelson Piquet for Williams. With three laps left to go in the Grand Prix, Ricard Petrese in the McLaren retired for the Grand Prix along with Eric Comas who was down in 14th. However, the race soon came to an end with Prost winning the German Grand Prix with Brundle taking 2nd for Ferrari, Nakajima 3rd for Lotus, 4th for Ayrton Senna, Ricard Petrese still getting 5th place and still getting 2 points, and Nelson Piquet gained the final point for Williams in 6th place. With the first half of the season completed, it was now time 
to check the driver's standings. And after eight races, Alan Prost with a five point lead over Alberto in second with 36, who was a further seven points ahead of Ayrton Senna, who only has 29 points for Lotus. And into the Constructors' Championship, Fry have a one point lead over McLaren, who have a further two points ahead of Lotus with 53. And in fourth place is Williams, who are uh, 37 points behind. The third night of the season is the Hungarian Grand Prix at the Hungaroring. Ayrton Senna taking pole position for Lotus, Michele Albrecht second for Ferrari, Satoru Nakajima is third in the other Lotus, Giovanna Amati is fourth for Minardi, Nelson Piquet fifth for Williams, and Ricard Patrese in the McLaren running off the top six, with Alan Prost, the current championship leader, down in seventh place on the grid, and Eric Comas in tenth place for Minardi. Now, one driver did not set a lap time, and that was Gary Norman, who was supposed to be replacing Pascal Fabry for the rest of the season. However, it looks like they will not be letting Gary Norman drive at all for the rest of the season. So it's just Roberto Moreno in, alone in his ags in 12th place on the grid. Off of the start of this Grand Prix, both Minardi's kept their positions of 4th and 10th. Lap 27 of the Grand Prix, Alboreto and Nakajima both retired from the Grand Prix from 2nd and 3rd. That pushed Alan Prost to the McLaren and Philippe Elliott in the Williams into the top 6. After the Minari made their first pit stop for the Grand Prix, Giovanni Amati had retired from the Grand Prix from 6th place, while Eric Cohen's was the back. But anyway, Ayrton Senna was leading the Grand Prix with Patrese in 2nd, PK 3rd for Williams, 4th for Prost and McLaren, Ali of for Williams and Martin Brummer for top six, as Eric Comas had also retired from the Grand Prix, so both Minaris uh, both DNF this race. With the race uh, over, since pretty much nothing happened for the majority of the race after both Minaris double DNF, Gates wins the race for Lotus, with Alan Prost taking second for McLaren. In third place was PK for Williams, Roberto, no, Ricard Patrese fourth for McLaren. Philippe Helio 5th for Williams, and the final point going to Ferrari in 6th place. Just before very intense season, two more drivers were injured or unwell after uh, the Hungarian Grand Prix. Michele Alberto would be out just for this next race, while René Arnoux for Terrell would be out for the rest of the season. Round 10 is the Austria for the Austrian Grand Prix. Alan Prost taking pole position for McLaren, Giovanni Matti second for Minardi, Ayrton Senna third for Lotus, Anthony Chesler is fourth for Benetton, Stuart Nakajima fifth for Lotus, and Ricard Patrese running up the top six in the McLaren. The other Minardi driver of Eric Comas is 15th in the grid, and the two test drivers for uh, Terrell and Ferrari didn't say a lap time, and obviously neither did the Ags driver. However, Derek Warwick is the, uh, did not make the 100% time, so he wouldn't be taking part either for Zach Speed, so only 23 qualified and 22 will start. Off for the start of the race, the Tour Nakajima, who qualified 5th for Lotus, stalled his car and was out to the Grand Prix. Meanwhile, Giovanni Amati managed to pass uh, Alan Prost off the start of the race to take the lead of the Grand Prix. Lap 3 of the Grand Prix, Andrew Duchesne, who was in 2nd place in the Benetton, got a 10-second stop go penalty, and so went from 2nd down to 14th. After both Minari's made their first pit stop for the race, Amati was leading the Grand Prix with PK in 2nd, Patrese 3rd for McLaren, Alio 4th for Williams, Brundle in 5th for Ferrari, and Alan Prost ran for top 6 in his McLaren. Lap 28, Philippe Elliott and Martin Brown, who were 4th and 5th for Williams and Ferrari, both retired from the Grand Prix, which pushed Yannick Dallas in the La Russe into 5th, and Thierry Boutsen for Brabham into 6th. After the Minaris made their 2nd pit stop for the race, PK was leading the Grand Prix with Amati in 2nd, Nani 3rd for Benetton, Boutsen 4th for Brabham, Patrese 5th for McLaren, and Yannick Dallas get in the final points position in 6th. After uh, Minardi made their third and final stops of the race, Nelson Piquet was leading the Grand Prix with T Boots in second for Brabham, Amati third for Minardi, 
Nanini 4 for Benetton, Petrezi 5th for McLaren, and Yannick Damas rounding off the top 6 for La Russe. Lap 52 of the Austrian Grand Prix, Thierry Bootsen retired from the Grand Prix from 2nd place which gave 2nd place to Giovanni Amati as the race ended with Nelson Piquet winning the Grand Prix for Williams, Amati 2nd for Minardi, Nanini 3rd for Benetton, Petrezi 4th for McLaren, 5th for Jan Dallas and Thierry Bootsen still gets a point for Brabham in 6th place. Round 11 is the Canadian Grand Prix at Montreal. Giovanna Matti taking pole position for Minardi. Both Lotus is second and third. Both Ferraris fourth and fifth. And round off the top six is Thierry Boussin for Brabham. The championship contender, Ellen Prost, is in eighth place on the grid for McLaren. Eric Comis in the Minardi is 15th on the grid. And the only driver uh, who um, is taking part at this point uh, did not make the 107 percent time and would be taking part is Roberto Marino for AGS. Off of the start of the race, Jean Alessi qualified 14th in his LaRousse, stalled his car and was out of the Grand Prix. On lap 3 of the Canadian Grand Prix, a 10 second stump go penalty was issued out to Keke Rothberg who was running at the back of the field. Lap 6 and Eric Comis retired from the Grand Prix from 14th place. After Amati made his first piss up the race, Martin Brundle will lead the Grand Prix with Amati in 2nd, Alberetto 3rd for Ferrari, Mansell 4th for Brabham, Prost 5th for McLaren and Satoru Nakajima rounded off the top 6 for Lotus. Lap 48 of the Canadian Grand Prix, Martin Brundle from the Lee of the Grand Prix retired from the Grand Prix at the same time as one of the back market drivers of Franco Scapini in the Arrows. After Amati made his second and final piss up the race, Philippe Alia was leading the Grand Prix with Man no, Senna was leading the Grand Prix for Lotus with Amati in second, Alia third for Williams, Mansell fourth for Brabham. Cross fifth for McLaren and rounding off the top six with Alberetto in the Ferrari. Lap 60 of the Canadian Grand Prix and Giovanna Matti retired from the Grand Prix from second place that pushed Nelson Piquet in the Williams into the top six. The race came to an end with Ayrton Senna winning the Canadian Grand Prix with Philly Palliotti sixth for Williams, Nigel Mansell third for Brabham, Alan Prost fourth for McLaren. Michele Alberto 5th for Ferrari and Nelson Piquet gained the final point in 6th place. Round 12 is the Portuguese Grand Prix Estoril. Both McLaren's in the front row of the grid. Ayrton Senna 3rd for Lotus. Both Ferraris 4th and 5th in the grid. And Giovanna Amati rounding off the top 6 for Minardi. The other Minardi driver of Eric Comis is 13th in the grid. And as the usual, the two drivers not uh, taking part are the two uh, test drivers for Terrell and Ags. Off at the start of the race, Giovanna Matti held to 6th place and as you can see Eric Comas disappeared uh, after qualifying was done and before the race started. Lap 20 of the Grand Prix and Martin Brundle retired from the Grand Prix from 4th place that pushed Giovanna Matti into the top 6. After Amati made her first pit stop at the Grand Prix, Prost is leading the race with Senna in second, Petrezzi third, Nakajima fourth for Lotus, Alberto fifth, and running off the top six was Nelson Piquet for Williams. After Amati made her second and final pit stop at the race, Prost is leading the race with Senna in second, Petrezzi third for McLaren, Alberto fourth for Ferrari, Nakajima fifth for Lotus, and Nelson Piquet sixth for Williams. Lap 56 and Giovanna Matti retired from the Grand Prix from 9th place. The race ended with Alain Prost winning the Portuguese Grand Prix with Senna taking 2nd, Petrezzi 3rd for McLaren, Michele Alberto 4th for Ferrari, Satoru Nakajima 5th for Lotus and Nelson Piquet gained the final point in 6th place for Williams. With 12 rounds completed it was now time to check the drivers and construct his standings. Alan Prost with a 6 point lead over Senna who was a further 12 points ahead of Michele Alberto with 4 races to go for the season. And in the Constructors Championship we can see that... 
we can see that McLaren had a four point lead over Lotus who had a further 17 points ahead of Ferrari. Round 13, the Spanish Grand Prix at Jerez. It's a Senate in pole position for Lotus with Alan Prost in second place. Martin Brundle third for Ferrari, Nakajima fourth for Lotus, Ricardo Petretti fifth and Michele Alboreto with still an outside chance to win the championship is sixth on the grid. The two Minari drivers are 22nd and 23rd on the grid and the two drivers of the 24 uh, uh, competing for this race that didn't make the 107% time and wouldn't be racing were Eric Kovas and Jonathan Palmer for Tyrrell. Off at the start of the race, Giovanna Matti held onto the position, which is sadly last place. Lap 11 of the Spanish Grand Prix and Martin Brundle from third place retired from the Grand Prix is Ferrari that pushed Alessandro Nini in the Benetton into the top six. Lap 40 of the Grand Prix, Ricardo Patrese retired from the Grand Prix from fourth place along with the bat marker of Sean Alessi. That pushed Franco Scapini in the arrows into the top six before he came to the pits and let Andrew Chester get into the top six. After Amati made her first pit stop of the race, Cross was leading the Grand Prix with Senna in second, Alberetto was third for Ferrari, Nakajima fourth for Lotus, and both Benetton drivers are fifth and sixth. After Amati made her second and final pit stop of the Grand Prix, Cross was leading the race with Senna in second, Alberetto was third, Nakajima fourth, and both Benetton's ran up the top six as Giovanna Amati soon retired from the Grand Prix, still in last place. The race came to an end with Aaron Pross winning the race. 13 second for Lotus, Alberto third for Ferrari, so the three championship contenders all making the podium. In fourth place we had Nakajima and the other Lotus, and the two better drivers of Alessandro Nini and Nadja Chesaris rounded off the top six. Round 14, the Mexican Grand Prix at Mexico City. Alberto gained pole position for Ferrari, Giovanna Matti second for Minardi, Alan Prost third for McLaren, Martin Brundle fourth for Ferrari, fifth for Ricard Patrese in the McLaren, and Ayrton Senna gained the top branding of the top six for Lotus. Eric Comis is in 11th in the Grand Prix, and out of the 24 drivers, the three people who did make the 107% time and would be taking part were Gerhard for Zack Speed, Philip Street for Liche, and Eddie Chiva for Arrows. Off for the start for the Mexican Grand Prix, Nigel Mansell stalled his car so he was out of the Grand Prix while both the Minari drivers held onto their possessions of 2nd and 11th. After the two Minari drivers made their first pit stops of the race, Michele Alberetto was leading the Grand Prix with Prost in 2nd, Patrese 3rd, Amati 4th, PK 5th and Martin Bruno 6th as one of the uh, Constructors Championship contenders of Nakajima for Lotus retired from the Grand Prix. Lap 37 of the Mexican Grand Prix and Amati retired from 4th place that pushed Philippe Alio in the Williams into the top 6. After uh, Eric Kobus made his second and final stop of the race, Alberetto was leading the Grand Prix with both McLaren drivers second and third, PK fourth, Martin Bell fifth, and the final point position was the other contender of Ayrton Senna in 6th place. So Alberetto at this stage would get 6 more points than Prost and Prost would outscore Senna in this race by 2 points. No 3 points I mean, not 2. Lap 58 of the Mexican Grand Prix and from 4th and 5th place PK for Williams and Brando for Ferrari both retired from the Grand Prix that pushed Thierry Boutin in the Brabham and Philippe Alliot in the Williams into the top 6. The race soon came to an end with Michele Alberto winning the Mexican Grand Prix in his Ferrari with both McLaren 2nd and 3rd. In 4th place is Aiton Senna for Lotus, Thierry Boots in 5th for uh, Brabham and Philippe Palio running off the top 6 for Williams. In the Drivers' Championship, Alan Prost had a 10 point lead over Ayrton Senna who had a further um, 8 points ahead of Alberto. It was no longer possible for Alberto to beat Prost, all he could do was tie with Prost. Uh, in the Constructors Championship, McLaren had an 11 point lead over uh, Lotus, who had a further um, 
a further 16 points ahead of Ferrari. All three of these teams could still win the Constructors' Championship at this point. After the Mexican Grand Prix, Terrell had gone bankrupt. So, Rene Arnoux and Jonathan Palomar, who were racing for the team, were out of Formula 1. And Christian Dunn, who was their test driver, who never got to do a race because Terrell wouldn't let him, was also out of Formula 1. Here is the driver transfer list along with the three Terrell drivers who are now out of Formula 1, who all joined uh, the team after being uh, race drivers for other teams last season, except for Jonathan Palmer, he was the motor driver too. We had Ray Arnoux who was at LaRousse last season, and we had Christian Dana who was at Williams last season, and now all three drivers are out of Formula 1. Round 15 is the Japanese Grand Prix of Suzuka. Giovanna Amati is in pole position, Martin Brundle second for Ferrari, Alan Prost third for McLaren, Michele Alboreto fourth for Ferrari, Ricard Petrizzi fifth for McLaren, and Eric Comas rounded off the top six. The championship contenders of Alan Prost and Ayrton Senna are third and ninth on the grid. Ayrton Senna will need to outscore Prost by at least one point to stand a chance of beating him in the final race of the season. If he fails to score a point, or outscored Prost by one point in this Grand Prix, Alan Prost will win once again this season with the 1987 mod for McLaren Tag Porsche. So, can Ayrton Senna take that stop McLaren and Prost winning this, this season this time? We're going to find out. Off the start of this Grand Prix, Giovanni Matti held on to the lead, while Eric Comas held on to 6th place. Lap 2 of the Grand Prix and Gerhard Berger in 7th place with that speed got a 10 seconds stop go penalty and ends up coming out of the pits in 21st. After both Minardis made their first pit stops of the race, Patrese was leading the Grand Prix, Alberetto in 2nd, Amati 3rd, Brundle 4th, Prost in 5th and Philly Alley in 6th as Eric Comas retired for the Grand Prix from 10th place. As things were looking out so far, Prost is on his way to winning the championship in this Grand Prix, as Ayrton Senna is still behind Prost. After Matty made her second and final pit stop of the Grand Prix, Patrese was leading, with Alberto in second, Prost in third, Amati fourth, Brundle fifth, and well, actually, Amati and Brundle both retired at the same time. Another double DNF for um, Minardi, but also um, Mark the Ferrari. Ferrari have pretty much lost their chance to win the Constructors Championship with Brundle retiring. Senna's in fifth and Bootsen running off the top six and Prost would still be in the position to win the championship uh, in this race since Senna is still behind the McLaren. The race soon came to an end with Patrese winning the Grand Prix, Alberto sixth for Ferrari and Alan Prost who has won the season is in third for McLaren. The two Lotuses are fourth and fifth so Senna losing out in the championship, Thierry Boutsen around the top six of Brabham. So McLaren have uh, has got Alan Prost his fourth season victory on the bounce. With Senna with 12 points behind with one race left to go. He, his best bet would be only to finish three points behind Prost. So it doesn't really matter anymore. McLaren have a... 19 point lead over Lotus, which means McLaren have also won the Constructors Championship with one race to go. The 16th and final round of the season was Adelaide at Australia. Both Ferraris got the front row, both McLaren's the second row, and both Lotus in the third row, with Amati 7th and Eric Comas 14th. Since there was nothing left to play for, there's not really uh, uh, much to talk about in this race. Uh, but the three drivers who did make the 107% time and wouldn't be taking part in this final race of the season were Franco Scapini for Arrows, Philippe Street for Lichy, and Jean Alessi for La Russe. As the race started, Martin Brundle, who qualified in first place, stalled his car and was out of the Grand Prix, while both uh, Minari drivers kept the positions of 12 and 6. Lap 30 of the Australian Grand Prix and Satoru Nakajima retired from the Grand Prix along with Keke Rothberg who was roughly at the back of the field. That pushed Giovanni Amati into the top six. 
After both Minaris made their se- their first pit stops of the race, Alberto leading the Grand Prix with both McLaren second and third, Ayrton Senna fourth for Lotus, Thierry Boots in fifth for Brabham, and running up the top six was Philippe Palio and Williams, as Eric Comas had retired from the Grand Prix. Shortly afterwards, Giovanna Matti also retired from the Grand Prix from ninth place, so yet another double DNF for Minardi. Lap 58, and Thierry Bootsen retired from 5th place in his Brabham. That pushed Philippe Alliot in the Williams into the top 6. The race uh, ended to end the season of Formula 1 as Alboreto won the race for Ferrari. The two McLarens gained the, the, two, the other two podium spots, Senna 4 for Lotus, and the two Williams gained the final points for this final race of season 4 of the 1987 mod. With the season finally ended, it's time to check the final standings for the Drivers and the Constructors Championship. Alan Prost got 80 points, which is 11 more than second place. Michele Alboreto with 69 points for Ferrari. Ertesella lost not only lost the championship, but he lost second place to Michele Alboreto at the last race of the season with 67. He got 22 more than Prost's teammate Ricard Petrese, he was in 4th with 45. Satoru Nakajima got less than half of his teammates uh, points with 32 points. Nelson Piquet pretty much the best of the rest team with Williams with 28 points who managed to beat Martin Brundle for Ferrari with, who had only 21 compared to his teammates 59. Philippe Alio in 8th place rounding off page 1 with 15 points which is nearly half of what his teammate Piquet got this season. Looking at page 2, people who placed 9 downwards got less than double digits. Andrew DeCesar is getting 7 points for Benetton, which is 1 more than Butson, Warwick, Nanini and Amati who all got 6 points each. Nigel Mansell got 5 for Brabham, then we have Yannick Dambas for the Roos, and Franco Scapini for Arrows with 2 points apiece. And then we get to Berger, Comas and Chiva who only got one point uh, this season for Saxby, Minardi and Aris uh, respectively. And now we're on to the drivers who didn't score any points at all this season. Philip Street for um, the, for Liche with no points, Sean Lacey for LaRousse no points, Kiki Rosberg for Liche no points, Pascal Fabry for Alex no points, Roberto Moreno for Alex no points. The remaining drivers with no points, we have the two with Parma and Arnu who are at the bankrupt Terrell team who also got no points. Last but not least we have Willie Ribbs who made his one-off appearance this season at the German Grand Prix for Benetton after Nanini was ill. He didn't get any points but he only had one race to compete in so for Willie Webb, Ribbs it's a bit of a soft excuse. And here is the final st- constructor standings with McLaren with 125 points, the only team to get more than 100. Lotus coming second with 99, which is 9 more than Ferrari in third. And then we have Williams, who were best of the rest, got less than half of the amount of points Ferrari got with 43, who had 30 p- more points than Benetton, who was in fifth. Brabham, the last team to have double digit points, um, with 11 in sixth place. And then we have Zaxby and Minardi who both got 7 points each. And here is the rest of the team standing. Arrows getting 3 points, LaRousse got 2 points, Ags and Liege both got 0 points, but so did Terrell. But since they were bankrupt they were no longer listed in the standings. But So basically 3 teams got no points this season. And just before we end the video, it is time to see what engines have been improved for next season. Ford have improved their engines, which was being used by Lotus, Benetton and Williams. So if Lotus were to keep using Ford engines, they might have a better chance at beating McLaren next season. Or that would be if Tag Porsche haven't improved their engines next season, but they have. If McLaren keeps using Tag Porsche engines, I would say McLaren might win for a fifth time uh, in this mod and maybe Prost might make his driver's championship win 5 for 5 next season if he's still at McLaren. The third engine supplier to improve their engines is Honda and the only team that were using Honda engines was Ferrari. So if Ferrari kept using Honda engines this season 
as well as for, uh, forwards keeping supplied by Lotus and tag post supplied by McLaren. So basically, the top three teams are would be even more fa- uh, powerful for next season uh, between those three teams and everyone else. Plus, Benetton and Lee Shea, if they kept using forward engines, sure, they'd be, uh, get a power boost, but they're not going to be able to compete against the top three teams. The final uh, engine supplier to improve their engines is Zack Speed, and the only team using Zack Speed engines is, of course, Zack Speed. So Zack Speed, uh, like Benetton and Lee Shea, if they keep using the same engines, sure, they might they might um, get something like 4, 5, or 6 this season, like Benetton and Lee Shea would, but they're definitely not going to uh, be able to catch Ferrari, Lotus, or McLaren if they're using their engine supply for next season because, they'll, because their engines have improved. Now, since the phase ended, I just want to say I would like to thank you all who waited for the season to come out because it's been about three or four months since I made up last uploaded the vid, the um, season three video. I did get this uh, video, uh, these clips recorded uh, like all the way back in January, or February. The problem was I just didn't have the time to or the private time to do these voiceovers. So I want to thank you all for your patience who've been waiting for this to come out. I am really, really sorry it took me this um, this long to get the video done. And I really, really am grateful for your patience to be waiting for this video to come out. I will try my absolute best to get these out more quickly, but I cannot promise that at all. I just want, but I will try my absolute damnedest to get this out more quickly. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you're enjoying the season. I hope you're enjoying the, the these videos uh, in general. So thank you guys so much for watching, and goodbye.